Ted seems to be leading the charge here with springing up and getting out of the tent. Just kidding. I really hope that uh, the caribou will return to the north in their historic levels. Reading stories about this area by Farley Mowat and uh, him seeing the, uh, the migration is just such an absolutely incredible thing to read about, let alone to witness and to understand the throngs of life, the largest migration route out of any animal on the face of the earth is the barren land caribou, the incredible animal that is the emblem of the north that has sustained life of indigenous people here for millennia. It's incredibly, incredibly special and they're all dying. Um, and there's all kinds of reasons compounding but nobody really knows why 100% and I really, really hope that we can, uh, that we can see caribou again in those numbers like that not just piles of antlers and bone and if not in my lifetime in my son's for whatever reason jim has decided not to wear his bug shirt bug jacket whatever you want to call it and he's over there just suffering just swatting himself screaming yelling crying itching black flies just have an uncanny ability to just find the softest skin the balls just got massacred once again and my vein is. That's horrible. Honestly, it's it's got its drawbacks. Uh, it's hot in here. Uh, you can't see as well. You can't drink and eat through it, etc. But it provides a nice relief. Running out of bug spray was really the the kicker for me. The black flies are extremely bad this morning. I went over there to uh, take a number two and the brief period of time where I had my pants down, I looked down at my legs and they're crawling, hundreds of them on there. My uh, junk got bit up, my taint got bit up to the point of near insanity. Lunch for today will be the usual. Cliff bars, trail mix, fruit to goes, peanut butter pita, and built bars. Hooray! On the bright side, it doesn't look like we're gonna run out of coffee and creamer. Bugs like the color black. This shirt's not too white anymore, but lighter colors definitely do less to attract bugs. So if you're gonna buy a rain jacket or outdoor clothing, try not to go with uh, black. Some dried blueberries, ladies and gentlemen. And there it is. First class breakfast. Two, three. We're discussing the fact that we might drown today. Yeah, most intense whitewater day up to this point. We're gonna have more intense ones in the future, but 
it's so hot like that I've literally been like blacking out and extremely uncomfortable with the heat wearing the dry suit but at the same time it's like if you dump and you're in the middle of this rapid the current's so strong you're not the river's so big you're not going to be able to get to shore anytime soon so you might have to deal with a long swim when you're submerged in that water for a long time say you tip out in the middle there the current's still quite strong and then you have to swim and pull your canoe in how long is that going to be look at the size of this river the current's too strong to like get to shore and run along shore and follow your canoe if you ditch your canoe it's going to be swept miles down river and you might never even find it so there's that it's kind of concerning actually yeah this is a Remington 870, really common, brought it for bear protection, specifically polar bear protection. If you have a long barrel, you know, you're also going to have something that is more of a survival gun. Let's say you're stranded for some time and you have no food and you need to shoot a goose or do some hunting or whatever, you're going to have something that, uh, um, you know, would be able to get the job done. Hopefully we see a polar bear, but uh, not in a dangerous situation we decided to put our dry suits on the water is a bit colder it's going to get colder as we get towards hudson bay and the river volumes doubled but more so we're going to potentially have this long swim if we take the size of the river would mean that we might have a real challenge getting to shore in a reasonable amount of time while also staying with our canoe and trying to pull it into an eddy. And so it does make sense since we have them, but uh, it's so hot that um, it's a it's kind of a trade-off. We feel like we're almost like overheating. Dry suits have really made paddling those massive lakes that the ice just recently came off of a lot safer. It's nice and pretty sweet. This is uh, by GEP absolutely solid comes with this wicked leather sheath as well great great knife pretty sweet woke up this morning we're like i guess there's a bit of a haze that needs to burn off because it doesn't seem cloudy at all kind of like this ominous orange glow and then i started smelling a bit of smoke and i think maybe what's going on is there's a forest fire uh, a ways off that smoke is kind of clouding the sky a bit and making it look like a cloudy sky and creating a haze you know, windy days probably fueling it and blowing it over here i'm not surprised because like there's so much evidence of forest fires around here it seems far off wherever it is but hopefully it doesn't uh, spread over and give us any trouble has been due diligently handling the solar charging operation which has been pretty much a consistent battle but this thing has just been awesome He's got duct tape to hold the plug in really tightly because with rapids and jarring and just bushes. Just putting it in the bag. Tuck it in the bag and I tie the carpenter's bag together. I'm not sure how long it would last actually submerged. Maybe pretty good. Keep that as tight as I can in there. I clip the sides around the thwart here so the bag's actually clipped in. Some beaners here. Clip her, clip her down. There. And we are off. When the winds changed today, they blew some of that smoke here. Hopefully the wind's not also blowing the fire here. Fires are a natural thing in the Northern Boreal Forest. And actually the uh, biodiversity of the Northern Boreal Forest is largely fire induced. Some people even call it pyrodiversity. However, with uh, warmer temps and drier summers, in recent years, fires have been a lot more prominent and they're getting kind of scary. Yeah, we're just hoping it doesn't get worse and that, you know, you can have fire smoke and the fire can be miles and miles away, so I'm not concerned, but 
a thought creeps into your head, what if the fire gets closer? We just have to swim, swim down the river. The fire can't get us there. Ha ha. It's hot and dry today and windy, so definitely not good conditions for uh, taming a forest fire. Definitely would be spreading quickly today, I would imagine. So I uh, made a big error in that I left both my water bottle, Nalgene's, at our campsite. Oh no! I brought them down to the river, I packed everything, but this tall alders, they kind of got disappeared in there and I got sidetracked packing everything. Both of them? Yeah. I have two really nice, deliciously cold ones right now. What do you want to do? Nothing. I just don't have a water bottle. I can't go back. Right, and it's like three kilometers up a blasting current. More like eight kilometers. Yeah, so basically they're gone. I've got this squeeze bottle, but this is kind of a little flimsy. I'll give you my squeeze bottle bottom and you use your squeeze bottle top. How about that? Yeah. Oh, you whipped it past me and I thought Jim's got a heavy duty one, but he stopped using it because his filter is too clogged. If Fill in. Not working for it, I'll just give you one of mine, you know? Right. Anyway, disaster kind of averted but down to just like a flimsy squeeze bottle. I also have a life straw, but containers. Containers is one of those things that's so overlooked. A container is just really a vital, vital thing that, uh, you know, isn't an exciting thing per se. So it's like something you overlook. When we were on a loan, you had to pick 10 items. I think absolutely everybody that's ever been on the show either took a good sized pan that they could boil water in or a pot. They'd be like, no, I'd rather bring a knife or an axe or you know a bow, but really it's probably the thing you're gonna use more than anything is a pot or a water bottle. Anyway, hopefully that's all I forgot. Well, no luck. Not the kind of spot where I want to sit, uh, hit up the next spot. There's a tributary coming in called the Steel. The Steel meets the Seal. There might be some fish there. It's getting really smoky here. Smell fire more and more. We're experiencing some really strong headwinds. Kind of makes it much more challenging. Between the wind and the rapid, they're fighting and it's hard to get any forward momentum. It just almost stops you mid-current, which makes you very unstable, and it also makes the river more irregular and the waves blow up, so hopefully that doesn't become a problem. Pulled over to check out this bald eagle's nest and uh, there is an eaglet. Is it called an eaglet? A big eaglet staying in it. Uh, pretty amazing how they just managed to build these huge nests. There's a baby bald eagle in there. Hey buddy. He's hanging out. He's pretty big already. It's uh, parents might come back and kick the piss out of us, you know that, right? Speak of the devil. just incredible that it's able to make a nest on that dead tree yeah. hopefully it doesn't break hope it doesn't blow over what are you doing up there you're just hanging out just hanging out well we're gonna leave you
leave you alone now. Hopefully you, hopefully you have a wonderful day with lots of fish. It's quite big already, but super cool. Just on top of that, um, you know, dead spruce tree uh, that they built it, and like the baby's just sitting out there having a look. And mom or dad came back and squawked at us. Doesn't really like us being here, but really awesome to see all these bald eagles around and um you know they're kind of guiding us along the way it feels like and uh just so great to see them in such good numbers because they almost went extinct because of ddt but thanks to lots of efforts and banning the use of ddt and protecting their habitat they've come back and taken them off the endangered species list and now we're just seeing tons and more and more and more in areas where they were extirpated for a long time really so it's just really awesome to see the nest with a baby in it. Anyway, pretty cool, just incredible birds. Got a little rapido here, rapido. Beautiful day though, dude. So nice. Seal River is amazing, eh? Oh yeah, man. Thank God. Man. Really liking the Seal River. Fishing hasn't so far been as good as the South Seal. Dude, as long as we can catch enough fish to eat, whatever. Exactly. And the grayling are a nice change too. They are. It's getting to be more and more like the barren grounds, like tundra, eh? Right. Like with every kilometer, it just happened so quickly, dude. Yeah. Something just like sort of changed midway through, through Shithani Lake. Yeah. Just freaking awesome. The seals are popping up. Dude, the Seal River is the best, man. Yeah, this is so cool. Starting to look a little more polar berry, eh, Ted? almost getting to tundra look at over there where's the seal the seal river has really boosted morale amongst jim and ted it's such a sick river it's like the landscape it's just like tundra open beautiful nice shores just better than i imagined yeah seals bursting up out of the water just like smiling at us whoever sees seals in a river like this yeah. maybe the seals are hammering all the fish we're gonna have to eat sand if we don't catch any fish ticket <laughs> that was gold so morale is up the river's moving at a great clip we're making time the shoreline is just manageable which was one of our bigger concerns uh, how it was on the south seal but luckily you know the landscape has changed for the better on the seal and totally manageable to get out and line or walk or scout seeing seals pop up and catch an arctic grayling beautiful day uh it's just a great great time there's a seal right over there popping his popping his head up over there so yeah we're we're having a good day and really loving the seal river so far just gorgeous this looks like a good spot a shallower eddy current's not too strong there's some still water here but uh no luck so we're just gonna keep trying, just picking our way down. When we feel like taking a few casts, we'll pull over and hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have something. Maybe we won't, you never know, but um, it'd be really nice to uh, enjoy a couple delicious grayling again tonight. So we're gonna put some effort in. Class three, 750 meters, scout first, spray skirt required, gorge.
Yeah, let's take some cast. Really nice now too that you can actually get out of the boat without having to like bushwhack through horrific willows and what have you. Water's definitely clearer, eh? So cool. unable to land anything Ted caught one and almost caught two but the second one escaped him good little hole there yeah we'll just you know take a few minutes at spots like this and uh, hopefully catch at least one fish each for dinner so delicious looks from here like there's some other big water we're gonna have to jump out and scout the next one because from our river notes it says it's quite the doozy so like standing here might give you a better view oh oh so you're saying to stand come to the top yeah, okay. There is the gorge. It looks pretty huge on the right though. Here in a thunderstorm slowly rolling in, we're like, where is it coming from? Well, there it is. So we might be uh, bombing the rapids in a lightning storm. Just to amp things up. In order to scout this, we literally have to walk, what is that, like a kilometer down there, and we can kind of see it from here. What we've been finding, though, is that the rapids are way bigger when you actually get to them than when you look from upriver. And so we're not sure. We feel like we want to just kind of go for it because we don't want to walk all the way there, and we don't see any, like, boulders that could pin us or hurt us but maybe that's foolish, I don't maybe know. Maybe we just put our dry suits on and then, you know, if we dump, we dump. Probably fine, you know? Worst comes to worst, we just hit a gigantic wave train and probably don't even dump, you know? So far. I mean, we're probably gonna run it anyway, so we might as well just start giving her. We're just gonna run it. Should be awesome. Hopefully this thunderstorm holds off for a bit. Looks like we got some rain coming in behind us though. Here we go.
definitely uh, very manageable. Woo! Easy peasy. Oh, that was great. There's a class two right here. And then there's another class three soon. huge bro those were some big freaking waves there and a big hole uh, with the hole at the top so you'd be pretty swamped if you made it through that and then you had these massive waves to get through but uh, it is looking like we can kind of uh, for the most part get uh, out of the way of the big stuff but we'll see mark that as a class two who knows maybe you went to the other side of the island um, and uh, We'll see how this next 750 meter class three is in a gorge with a pinch and a contour crossing. It's gonna be interesting. It doesn't really look like it's gonna be as big as it is. And then when you get there, you're like, whoa, that's quite the uh, wave or the hole. Pretty wild. That was fun. That was pretty fun. Wow, this is so beautiful. I'm spin you around. Look at that. Wow, this river is just amazing. This is beautiful. I can't believe the seals just swim up all this, eh? Yep. This river is perfect for seals. There's no waterfalls on it. The water's deep. They can just swim up all the rapids and catch the eddies. Get up over 200 kilometers inland. I see a seal over here. We saw a seal. I just realized I know I don't really know any of the words to that at all. What? <laughs> just made all that up. I'm trying to hit the gloom on the drapes. <laughs> Light that you shine can be seen. Caution three center ledges upstream ferry across for drop so scout from there then ferry upstream and drop down the left that's what it shows let's go scout over here okay Go that way! 
Well, that was interesting. Uh, couldn't really scout it from the shore because of the higher water. And I couldn't see this rock ledge that you could barely see behind me. And I came around because I wanted to bomb some of the big waves, but it just started pushing me right into that rock ledge, which uh, is exposed. It would have been a bad thing to, uh, to hit and you would have got stuck and pinned there. So anyway, I just executed a pretty strong back ferry and then paddled into this eddy. But uh, I just kind of yelled out to Jim, like, don't go that route if he, I mean, the notes say not to. <laughs> I mean, what I did worked, but it's not really a smart plan. Looked like he had a pretty sweet run, but if you saw him back paddling there, there's a couple huge rocks that, uh, he was barely able to avoid and smashing into those or pinning on them could uh, you know trash your canoe and pretty much mean the end of the trip so as much as I'd like to go that way and looks like he ran it pretty good though with the double blade um, I think I'm gonna go around the far right still looks tricky anyways yeah I'm gonna hop in my boat and go now
Oh, it's probably just going to blow over in two seconds. anymore. things out here in the end it didn't really come directly over us pretty unlikely to get hit by lightning but still that was pretty bad we were a lot of lightning hopefully it didn't cause a forest fire what a scumbag jimmy I was in the woods. Ah! yeah i was like let's go stand in the woods jim's just like yeah let's hold this lightning rod like, what an idiot recently did a video where I had lightning like hit the water just like 30 yards from us. You could actually hear the sound of the lightning. And in the video, it's like, two before the thunder. So it's kind of like, you're just like, yeah, this is getting a little close. A few remnant lightning strikes here and there. Still raining, but all the lightning is that way and we're going that way. So we're gonna head out and uh, we think it's safe, but uh, that was quite the show. Cooled things off a little. Having damp clothes on already, uh, you start you can catch a chill. We're gonna hit a few more uh, fun rapids. Nothing like too intense, but just like long class one, two. Should be safe enough and uh, hopefully get to a nice campsite tonight. And we'll have done probably 40 clicks today, um, making pretty good time. 50, sorry, 50. It's 724. I don't know if it's like a sick campsite, maybe it's worth going for. It's like 20 kilometers. Well, we're just heading into two kilometers of rapid straight. Left or right of this island. Looks like left. I feel like there's fish in there, Jim. Are all those for ganders? Are we human? Or are we mergansers? Our cause is vital. Our hands are cold. And we're on our knees waiting for the answer. Are we human? Or are we mergansers? Fun. It's quite the class too. Yeah. Yo, bear, bear. So that was pretty cool. I uh, managed to capture a uh, 
black bear there. We just came down the rapid and uh, I saw some geese moving on the shore and then I saw this bear walking up. I'm like, bear, bear, and because uh, it looked like it was leaving and I was worried that Jim wouldn't see it. Uh, but I think it heard me, it stood up and then it kind of scurried away. So I was like, oh, did I spook it? But not really, it just went back in the bushes for a little and then moseyed around and was able to catch it on film for a good little bit there. So pretty cool. And the banks of the seal, because it's not so flooded like the South Seal and not so heavily wooded, uh, I feel like is better opportunity to see wildlife. And that's one great example right there. That was pretty cool. Always nice to see some wildlife for sure. There it is again. looks big but it, it's just running on the right okay pretty big ledge like at like 12 o'clock in front of you yeah I see a line but it looks kind of sketchy call that a class two it was a class three for sure so definitely the water is higher our notes say class two easy five foot waves in there for sure or bigger picked a good line but some irregular stuff like hit me made me a little tippy but yeah fun ass run for sure very big volume look at that sun Epic, like never ending sunsets out here, eh? It's sick day this has been. Yeah. Oh, Ted's got one. Yeah. I'm switching to gold immediately. Yeah. Another trailing. That's two now, eh? Yeah. That's great. Arctic grayling is on the menu again tonight. We got two, so we got one each. What do we want? Like one more? I was thinking, but nothing seems to be biting. Right. Well, at least we have one each. Yeah. One more. I, it's not as big as last night, but one each is like kind of, kind of like the minimum we need to supplement some of the food that we plan for it. 
I mean, we're only, uh, oh, I'm just getting killed by black flies. I just feel like they're biting me more than normal. Yeah. Um, we've only got uh, nine days left, so I'm sure, uh, you know, we survive, but uh, it gets pretty exhausting. We're already losing a lot of weight. Yeah, man. we're losing weight, so anyway. Um, and that one more fish would be nice. My personal favorite day of the trip so far, I think. Ran a bunch of rapids and this river is just absolutely spectacular. Ran a scenic gorge, Esker campsite, like just crazy cool. So, but anyways, we're pushing. We stopped early yesterday, so we're pushing it quite late into the evening tonight. Um, I don't even know the sun's going down and we got a few clicks and another class two in front of us it looks like there's an esker across from where we're camping so we might uh explore that tomorrow morning and we got dinner so we got fish to fry but uh, yeah it's gonna be a late one tonight for sure The campsite we were going for took a little longer to get there than what we'd anticipated and the sun is down, <laughs> should still have light for a little longer and we're almost there but seems to be taking a while. I think that that might be it over there. It's like I have it marked kind of right across from that like mini island in the channel. And the, the campsite. The campsite is looking like it's on the tip on the left here. Yeah, there it is. It's right there. Oh, you see it on the left. No, it's on the other side. Right, yeah. There it is. What time do you think it is? Like 10? Yeah, let me check. 10.30. 10.30? We're just getting to camp and it's 10 21. I see a flat spot up there. It's fine. Yeah. Pull up here. Oh. 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 Yeah, it's good. Drums here. What are these? Like fuel? Yeah, that looks old. I don't know what that was. It might just be a bucket. Cool fire pit. Cool fire pit here. Sounds like there's a thunderstorm rolling in. So I'm going to set up a tarp here. Yeah, I feel like uh, I have a good kind of read on the rapids now. You know, mm -hmm. still some curveballs every once in a while, but you know, I feel like we'll be able to handle the dead over and line and all that, you know? Right. I just take one and a half.
little dab of Old Bay. This is good. 50k today. We have 170 kilometers to go. Seems like nothing. Yeah, polar bears 70 kilometers up river. I heard that they come 70. I don't really know. Like, I don't know if that's rare or they're just always coming 70. Seems quite a ways from the coast, but polar bears are pretty badass. So. Extremely badass. Pretty terrifying, huh? Especially if we're like getting ahead and then we're just taking our time in the last 70, right? When, you know, camping and camping. I'd like to see a polar bear, but I don't want to see like the inside of its stomach. One of the best days, if not the best day of the trip, I tell you. Yeah, regardless, I think it was just in like coolness of our surroundings, you know? Right. Enough physically to feel, feel like we did something pretty badass, but not being absolutely beat, you know? Right. unable to get a haircut before I came so my hair looks like this so what I do in the morning is when I have my breakfast I have a spork and so I just use the spork part to, to make sure it's brushed nicely the the fork like this and I just I just comb it all back here get all the black fly guts out did you learn that from the little mermaid yep I get all the black fly guts out 
and uh, it actually works quite good and then just like pick through all the the knots and tangles you know, it's pretty good and then I just use the same spork uh, to eat my breakfast the uh, wind is a nice break this morning from uh, the bugs but they're still getting me day 18 as we can figure best just seems like a blur I can't believe it's been 18 <laughs> days it doesn't feel like it's been that long a blur. A lot of people will be like, why would you do such a hard thing? Like, what's the point? Maybe it's not for everyone, but uh, I think nowadays we've like forgotten how much we actually enjoy these kinds of things. The more you get used to it, the more you realize how like healthy and good it is for you and how as people and really animals, this is kind of closer to what we're supposed to be doing. It's so satisfying living in the moment and catching the fish that you need and being so self-reliant. It's actually a, a really good feeling. There's a place and time for everything, don't get me wrong. I've done some beach vacations and they're great. More of a mental break, but it's not that stimulating because really we're craving true adventure. It's actually much more satisfying and rewarding than you think, even though it's all of this work. Doing this kind of stuff definitely rings a chord in me. And some of the moments on trips like this are definitely among the most enriching in life, even though that they're challenging. As long as you've kind of explored and gone out of your comfort zone, it's more satisfying. It was our Father's 75th birthday yesterday. We're gonna call him today. This thing's amazing. Grabbed it from the satellite phone store. Sure he'll be surprised. I don't even think he knows we have this. Hi. Happy birthday. Oh, we miss you guys too. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Today we're going to have whitewater rapid after whitewater rapid as we careen towards Hudson Bay. Not today, but tomorrow and the following days. We're going to be uh, right in the heart of polar bear country here in northern Manitoba, close to the shores of Hudson Bay where they, they gather in large numbers. That's a concern, but also pretty cool. Um, I think there's a pretty good chance that we get to see a polar bear and I'm really excited for that. Hudson's Bay, the ocean. And uh, today we're gonna start off with some rapids, uh, class two, probably pretty big in these water levels, I'd imagine. Then three kilometers of fun, class ones and twos through a scenic gorge. Really looking forward to that. Just gonna be ripping along. Then we're gonna have some bigger stuff we're gonna be getting into, a couple of class threes, maybe even class four. Pack full of rapids today. Judging by the way things have been going, it seems pretty good. I mean, a tip in some of them, because they're so long, would be would be challenging, because the river's so big and fast, it would take your canoe, but water has come down since the, the, the South Seal. I think the seal is just much more capable of handling the volume. It's deeper, and it's uh, almost a month later. Just a really, really beautiful river. We're just absolutely loving this river. Fingers crossed everything goes well with the rapids today. We make good time and uh, we just have an enjoyable day all around. So we're just approaching our first rapid of the day. It says, our notes say, C2 left, avoid heavy flow. Well, the rapid in this case that we thought was a class two, is like literally just completely blowing out like the water's so high there's no rapid left here it's 
just a strong current. So it must have been shallower and rocky and uh, the water just got so high it basically flows over the rocks and they're too deep underwater to really even notice. Water pushing up on this island, eh? Yeah, it looks pretty high here. Look at the height difference, eh? Between here and there. Crazy. That's like an insane pinch. It might be way bigger than uh, than what the notes say, dude. It looks easy though. Oh, this looks sick. The hot weather we are experiencing is no more. We're gonna put our dry suits on, get her done, and suit up right now. Ow, just poke myself in the eye. Bastard stick. Here we go. Just approaching a three kilometer long rapid. Looks like it goes through a bit of a canyon too. Oh, I see some white water, some white, white water. That looks uh, raging. It's huge. Maybe we should scout. And by scout, I mean vomit. Get out of the way. Get out of my way. That's a guaranteed dump, maybe drown hole. Right, that's a keeper. Yeah. It's the corners, eh? When you look from up river, the corner, and when you're around, it looks like it's like this tight. And then you get here and you're like, ah, oh, it's not so tight. Be a long swim down this canyon. Yeah. Paddling the sea, oh river, feeling oh so wild and so free. Yeah, I just wanna live my life, oh living on the edge. If you looking for me, that is where I'll be. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Great fail. Whoa! Whoa! That looks huge. Can we get over to the left here? <laughs> Where's the Portage Trail? Maybe it's in here. I don't know. It's just a cliff. Is that an island there? Yeah, that's the island. I don't know if I want to run that, dude. Why don't we just bomb across and paddle around the island? Looks more like a four or five. Yeah, it's definitely a four. Our notes say, you know, take the right channel, it'll be C1 tech. Take the left channel and you'll be punching through a massive two meter class three, four wave. But uh, with this high water, we're looking at it and it's a guaranteed four all the way across from here. Who knows, maybe even, maybe even a four plus. So...
What do you think? We're in the I middle of nowhere really and maybe we... isn't the best to bomb a four plus. Well, I don't even know if we can. It looks like from up here, it looks like a right. dump for sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think at these water levels, dude, this is a no go here. After rounding this corner, we can just tell that the rapid, because of the high high volume, is essentially unrunnable or would be foolish to run. Looks like a raging four plus. We'd have to get out and walk quite a ways to scout it and just likely to find out what we can kind of tell from here that we shouldn't be running it. So we're gonna take a different channel that goes around this island, but now we're on the wrong side of the river. So we have to front ferry across a really fast current to get to the other side before we get pushed down that rapid backwards. And we don't have a lot of, lot of time to do that. We've got to make it in that calmer water. So that's what we're going to do. Well, as you can imagine, getting swept into that torrent backwards when I'm trying to front ferry would be pretty low on the list of things that I want to do today. It should be all right, but it's a very fast current. Um, in this case, honestly, the double blade is uh, pretty freaking good. I think this is a wise decision. It, uh, this section here makes me a little bit nervous about a rapid coming up that's called nine bar rapids that is very long and the river notes also mark it as a three four. So is it essentially just a four plus like this one the whole time? How is that gonna be in this water where when, you know, clearly this is a uh, a little bit uh, tougher than then so makes me nervous but um, who knows this does seem like maybe a bit more of a pinch and might be more dramatic so we'll probably be able to manage it and we should be able to manage anything we just got to use our heads and not be stupid you know we could just full send this kayak paddle full speed right into it probably be pretty fun probably wouldn't die uh, but you know pretty stupid Sure you don't want to use your double blade for this, Jim? Yeah. Wind is not helping me, dude. Kind of nailed it though. Uh, headwind. When we were in the eddy, we were blocked. Current. And the headwind. The headwind was just gusting, blowing me, making my downriver slip. I'm glad I used the double blade. Are you tired? Yeah. <laughs> me too. I didn't finish that much further down from you. This is just sketchy because you have to switch and like, you did a good job, man. You did a great job. I was just not planning on having to work that hard. Had some strong current in there. Yeah. Dude, there's a massive hole over there. That curling wave would just push you into the middle yeah. if it didn't dump you. Which is where you're gonna end up, is the reality. There's just like 10 holes in a row. It says it's a class one, eh? It's not a class one. So we're gonna hop out and have a look because uh, it's a complete blind corner. So you don't want to run a blind corner, even if your river notes say it's easy.
channel around the back of the island just spit you out to the same rapid. So here we are in the end scouting the rapid. It looks semi-runnable. <laughs> It's like a 90 degree turn and come in on the right and just sort of miss this massive wave on the right and these boils and sort of just get right and avoid it but it's gonna be harder than it looks. We're gonna almost have to hit it right next to the big waves and skirt them but there's some serious churning spinning current. Look Ted there's like a whirlpool here. There's like a whirlpool that appears and then disappears. See how fast the current Entering yeah. Line. Yeah. As long as you can make it through there and, and in, you'll probably be able to do it. You know. Also coming around that corner back here, the current pushing you strong into that. So looking from above, it looks like oh, we'll just stay right, but just staying right is going to be a challenge from high up. You go first? Uh, sure. All right. I'm gonna eddy out up at the top here, I think. Really? Yeah. I might not if I have a decent line. Do a high and then a low brace. Look, like you nailed it. I think I want to bail. Oh, yeah? Okay. A little bit of water. Not too bad. There's a seal in the rapids with me. 
That is some serious volume. Yeah, definitely bigger. We can see the boils, but even zooming in on the camera, it's hard to tell how big all the features are until you're right down there in the seat of your canoe. Oh, there's just seals frolicking and jumping in here. This uh, powerful rapids creating a bit of a whirlpool effect in here. And I saw the seals literally jumping in the rapids, like flying out like a dolphin in the surf. And then uh, come down here around the corner and they're in this like big whirlpool eddy area and they're jumping all around. Really freaking cool. That was exhausting. was uh, quite the freaking rapid. Even coming down the channel we had, essentially had to run a class four and try to just miss it. It definitely was not a class one down that side. So that's an example of the, the water level there for sure making a big freaking difference to the river notes. This next section of river is quite pinched and there's some big rapids and some long rapids. So we're gonna have to be extra cautious um, going through Not really sure the shorelines are looking a little uh, harder for linings too So we will see looks like we could probably get out and scout. Oh a seal leaping through the water. I love seals. Whoa, whoa. 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 That was cool, that seal's like boom, boom, jumping up like this. I just didn't get it. I might have got it on my GoPro, I don't know, but then he popped up and saw me and got all scared. Incredible, just seeing a seal come porpoising up the river. The rapids don't seem to intimidate them. We're getting washed down with pretty strong current here, and um, this class three with spirit looks like it might be a class four side would we portage on it does look like left there is a route i'm like flying down river towards this rapid here i like look at the shore probably like 15 kilometers an hour without paddling so that's what makes this this sketchy is because you know if you start coming down and there's nowhere to get out uh, you're like, oh, you just get swept over, but it does look like there's an eddy right up above it, thankfully. From upriver, it looks like a doozy, so this is going to cut into our time for sure. Wow, dude, what a rapid that was. That was fun, though. Dude, when we came on the scouting thing, there was one doing that through the rapid. Wow. You missed it. Yeah, so fun, man. And then the the seal here just right in front of you so cool go up here and uh sc and scout yeah And then just start heading for the left of the hole. Yeah. The middle left the whole way.
freaking huge. Little bit nervous, not gonna lie. Um, just massive and we had talked about getting middle right and it looks like he went far left at the bottom so maybe he had to make a decision because he was just getting pushed that way i don't know if he made it through the hole or he got far left of it but um being able to see what's there would be uh pretty uh comforting but uh i think i'm gonna go for it I couldn't see around the corner, but uh, that was the route to take for sure. Obviously, that's what Jim did. kind of paddling on a long stretch of super wide fast current approaching nine bar rapid which is about a four kilometer raging rapid class three which is probably more like four at these levels a ledge requires eddying out ferrying across the river lining the ledge running the the lower part our notes we have some intel saying it's a class three four but we're thinking it might be way more raging like some of the other ones and as we were approaching it ted said he saw a splash and a water fly way up in the air like it looked like it was intense so we don't know we're going to check it out we might have to portage the upper part of it and then uh, figure it out from there but We'll see. But the fact that we're seeing horse tails way back here isn't the best sign. So the map says, scout, caution, nine bar rapids, class three to four, two meter ledge, not visible from upstream scout. Work your way to the right, line for a finish. C2 finish. Anyway, it would be really, really nice if this was a runnable run really nice not as big as the last that last raging four i think that's what's got us spooked is that last class four that he had as a class three four was just so huge that we're worried oh is this like three or like a kilometer of that um but maybe we'll get lucky and it won't be Doesn't look as bad as the uh, the other one. I think it's pretty massive though. It looks more churny than that last three. All right. Tricky boils and currents. Squirrely stuff. Doesn't look so bad. Doesn't look so bad. Looks wide, so like maybe we can avoid stuff. Pretty raging, but all oh, the black flies and mosquitoes have found us. As soon as it gets a little nice out. Yeah. Quite a long ways to scout here. This is a long rapid. It's getting eaten alive as I'm coming to scout it. As soon as the weather gets a little nice, the black flies come out. Whew. Eddie out on the left after the island, just run it, avoid the big Try not to dump and swamp. 
Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Pretty straightforward, man. It looks pretty good on the left. Yeah, eh? just run it down left the whole way. Thank God. We're really concerned about this one. It, it doesn't look easy, but it looks like we'll be able to do it. Run it down the left the whole way. You can't really pick a perfect line because it's so long. And look at how big it is way down there. So you just have to uh, make some decisions while you're out there and just avoid the big stuff. It always looks way bigger when you're in it, but uh, we're happy that this is, you know, going to be a rapid that we're going to feel confident about running. Probably going to need to bail substantially. But after we run this, we're going to have to eddy out, cross the river, jump out, line the ledge, run the tail end. So this is really long. Um, so yeah, we got our work cut out for us. But after this, we have about 10K to cruise to finish our daily distance and then a campsite. So a couple more easier rapids. So we're sort of home free after this one. So just hoping that uh, goes smoothly, but it should be interesting. But we're gonna have to remember that we're gonna have to eddy out on the left once we're past that island, about 500 meters down because there's the huge ledge. If we go over that, our goose is cooked. So we're gonna have to get over and then find a way to ferry over the other side to line it. So, you know, but I think we should be able to do this. But look at it, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, starts freaking up way up here. Like, it's quite big. We're going to run it. We are going to run it. Good luck, Ted. Good luck, Jim. Big mistake there.
I hit a rock, eh? Me too. Dude, I blew it at the top. I was like too complacent. Going through that V you went through, just crashed in the hole and took all this water. First wave. <laughs> Woo! That was epic, dude. That was sick. Quite a few ledges and holes, eh? You don't see them at all from the scum. And just churning waves, I have like water splashing in my face. Exhilarating, dude. Yeah, that was, that was a wild rapid, man. And that, the end was intense. Yeah. Oh God, I love it. So we're supposed to scout from here. I got a bail. Yeah, me too. Spray deck was pretty oh, key man, there. Yeah. Oh, there's the ledge. There. Way down there. Frothing thing that goes all the way across the river. Work your way to shore, get out, line that basically. Looks like there should be ample space to get out. Figure maybe we'll line it, you know? But yeah, to see the rocks? Yeah, the like far ledge that goes all the way from River Run, starting at those rocks there. Well, we just took a pretty big stroll after eddying out and bailing, and we have like just freaking continuous whitewater. Wow! Look, Ted Bald Eagle flying over the ledge. We see it, thank you! And we're just like, what an impressive piece of water this is. So wide and just goes on and on. It's just so freaking cool, just so beautiful. And this second part is not as intense as the part we just ran. However, at the very end of this, before the whole rapid ends, there's a freaking two meter ledge that spans the entire river. So we have to run this and like work our way to shore and hopefully there's something. We can't even get over there because there's a steep bank, but it looks like behind that bank there's gonna be some sort of eddy or calm part. We can get over and then scout the ledge and then probably line down the ledge, controlling our boats with long ropes as we run along the shore and that will pretty much put us through nine bar rapids, but I'm not gonna count my chickens before they're hatched. Uh, anyway, so yeah, time to jump back in the canoe, but first we got to walk all the way back. Essentially just uh, what the notes say to do, um, but they definitely help because that, this could be an easy like paddle it down and not recognize it's a ledge until you get close and you panic over the ledge. So this rapid's not as intense, but of course there's the ledge. Wolves have been here. About to run the second long drop, notorious nine bar rapids. There is a doozy of a ledge right at the end. So we're gonna have to try to get over on the left. Hopefully we won't be like frantically grabbing onto branches trying to stop. It's a family of geese in my eddy. Excuse me, guys. We need to borrow that parking space. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty big ledge.
what an impressive piece of water, eh? This section here in particular, you see all that water flowing and then there's no current after it. That's kind of like the effect of a low head dam where it would just hold you right there and drown you real quick. when you basically control your canoe at the end of a rope as you run along shore because it's just too bouldery and shallow to actually sit in the canoe and run it so things can go wrong when you're lining too you can pin a boat lose a boat so you got to be careful you got to be pretty nimble but I think we should be able to line this one safely it's a good thing we pulled over because the middle of this ledge looks like just like death so this is hopefully not going to be that Down nine bar rapids, yeah! Wild freaking stretch of river here. Man, is it ever beautiful. What an adventure just getting down this section of river, running the rapids with the most dangerous piece at the very base of it. Well, that should be it for the uh, really challenging, more dangerous rapids for today. We're gonna put a few more kilometers behind us, but uh, big relief that this, um, you know, I think what it is, it's on the far right side, it's a class four, and on the side we ran it, it was a three, so three, four. Um, you know, maybe you rate it as a four because of this ledge at the bottom. I'm not really sure. This ledge looks pretty unrunnable in most places, uh, but you know, obviously, some people could run it in the right uh, with the right setup. But um, wow, what a freaking beast of a rapid! Glad it wasn't like that other ridiculous one the whole way. That just would have been nuts. It would have been a portage. So so stoked that we were able to run it because uh, that was part of my concern. You know, you have to portage, you miss out on all that fun. So freaking oh, wicked. There's seals in this river. Like, this is a freaking 
amazing river. Just so beautiful, spectacular, everything. Seals. Jimmy's right there. We're gonna put some K's behind us and get to camp. But another great day on the river so far. Lost the skid plate running the rapid. Look at this. Maybe that's just a skid plate. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, just, the yeah, skid plate looks like. In well, that's everything I wished Nine Bar Rapids would be. Wicked. Yeah. You know? Like you need a zero. Nine bar rapids took a few casts. Ted got bites. I had one on, lost it. Kind of a bummer, but super late. So we don't have much more time, so maybe we won't have fish tonight, but epic day nonetheless. Wow. Well, it appears nine bar rapids didn't work out so well for somebody. That's what happened. It's another piece up there. Piece there, smashed. Thankfully that didn't happen. That is a, a glum omen, a reminder to be careful, man. Stuff can happen out here. That happens to you, and can you even get your gear back? All your clothes, all your food is in it. Does it just rip out and wash away? Does it get pinned up on the river? Like, um, and then you gotta end up trying to walk out of here, especially if you don't have uh, a satellite phone or a, you know a communication or some sort of uh, plan for someone to come rescue if you don't show up by a certain time. You know, you dump at the top, it bashes your canoe around between rocks, pins it on a rock, the current's so strong, you can even rip it in half. That's even a heavy duty Royal X canoe. That's part of why Jim, Jim and I are paddling solo canoes. It's safer if that happened to one of our canoes, we could make it out of here in the other one, as long as we had both. So anyway, Scary stuff. That looks like a Royal X canoe too, the strongest of the strong. You can find yourself in a survival situation real quick. Might have to try to walk out uh, to Churchill. It's probably over 300 kilometers to the closest, you know, bit of civilization and, uh, you know, many rivers and lakes to cross along the way, but pretty much nearly impossible. Um, that's why. I carry a, a survival sat texting device so I can try to walk somewhere maybe to where a plane can land. I carry that on my body so even if I lose everything else, I'll have something on me to survive for some time and some communication equipment. Awesome lighting here with the sun setting. There's a bald eagle right there behind me. That was a really cool experience. There's just a massive, uh, like a, just a big bald eagle just sitting there so trusting of me coming right up to it. Almost wonder if it's uh, injured or something. Uh, for whatever reason, it uh, wasn't too concerned about me. Maybe it's holding the fish that it doesn't want to have to carry away or something, but uh, 
Yeah, a really cool experience for sure. And I uh, just got some pictures and a bunch of footage of it, but the day is late and I didn't have time to do any of it. So Jim's way down the river yelling at me to hurry up. Sun is almost down. It's got to be like 10:30 at night, so it's a late one again. Don't really mean to get on the schedule here, but it has been the last couple of nights. I guess it's not the end of the world, but uh, yeah, we we are short of our kilometers uh, today just because we put in so many miles yesterday. Uh, late to go to bed, late to break camp, and then we were just faced with all kinds of uh, challenges today that uh, took some time. Overall, super cool. And uh, we did make it past some serious obstructions that, you know, even one of them even could have been a portage. So you have to expect that to take a little bit longer. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. Uh, we have strong current and all that, but we do have some serious uh, white water coming up too. So we're gonna have to uh, make a little bit better time in the coming days. We might have to just pull over and just like, camp which kind of sucks because uh there's so many options for great spots around here but if we can't find one before dark anything will do really so i guess that's the plan really cool day today uh, tons of seals didn't catch any fish but had a couple on that we lost so got some action but crazy crazy uh, rapids nine bar rapids was just like absolutely epic what an impressive piece of water that is so cool day for sure Curious little guy. Nothing really looks all that great. We found a point here that's like a bit of an esker, but it's just like such a climb of loose gravel and sand up to the top, but maybe it'll have to do. It's in the wind, maybe there'll be no bugs. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I think that's what we're gonna do, is just camp on this. There's a nice little landing here and an eagle was soaring over it. <sighs> We're tired and we need food. I don't particularly feel like hauling up of a slippery sand cliff, but it looks like that's what we're gonna do. At least there's a good place to land here, right Ted? here to a pretty exposed windy spot but hopefully there's a flat spot for the tent Whoa. definitely a bit of a mission to get our gear up here a mission nice view no bugs up here though it's pretty good doesn't look like too much flat space for a tent yet I think this will do it's flat there's firewood sure it has one hell of a view wow what a mission Looks like there's a flat tent spot. Yes. Oh, jeez. What a view. Somehow the black clothes are still finding my face, but beautiful freaking view. Beautiful campsite. Look at the size of this river. The river narrowed in the sections we were running today because it essentially branched around a massive island and this is where the river meets back up 
way over there. We paddled from there. So now they're meeting. And uh, this is kind of a lakey air section, but lots of current. And uh, now the river's getting massive again. Pretty cool. Well, we're at our campsite. Look, look at this. Um, we couldn't reach one of the marked campsites, but you know, you make do when you have to. And we, you know, just kind of pulled over and we're like, how about up there? Like we had to scramble up this freaking huge cliff, like loose rock, Esker cliff, haul all our gear up here. But honestly, it is absolutely spectacular. Look at this view. There's a good breeze coming, which uh, is helping keep the bugs down. But by some absolute stroke of the devil's wand, they're still here killing us. Um, I don't know how they could possibly, like there's just mi millions of them. I'm hitting like thousands with my hands right now, despite the wind and being up here but it is helping so when you face the wind they're not directly in your face but there's a lot here if you face the other way they're all over your face anyway what a freaking beautiful beautiful spot what a beautiful view i think it was worth hiking up here i you know like a lot of the time like oh, i don't want to drag my gear up but the, the times we've done it this trip have honestly arguably have been maybe the three best sites of the whole trip we had to haul stuff up but like just looking out the expanse and like you feel free and it's just like amazing so i'm loving it up here there's a flat tent spot and what a river what a day just like huge rapids and like that tr nine bar rapid was just a freaking wild and even the raging class four we were hoping to be able to run but we just we couldn't we, we had to duck down the side it was still i'd still call what we did like we ran a class four and snuck past it but even what we did was like a technical class three i would say for sure the river notes say a class one but in this water level, that was a technical three. We even like went in a whirlpool that like spun us around like a top. So anyway, it was a fun run. Uh, nine bar rapids was a freaking blast. There's seals just jumping out of the river everywhere. There's seals in the river. It's a river, it's fresh water. Where are these seals coming from? Like unbelievable, spec like no wonder it's a Canadian heritage river. It is gorgeous and the landscape is gorgeous bald eagles up the wazoo more bald eagles than you could shake a stick at around here we don't have um a fish for dinner tonight but we literally only got like 10 minutes to try lost a couple got a bunch of bites but that's okay you know you can't catch them all left a few for the eagles left a few more for the seals right and um you know we're just visiting their habitat so that's okay what a day feels really good to get that dry suit off um you just get soaked under and it gets so clammy your sweat and you get these like pins and needles because like your body's trying to sweat but it can't really sweat so like the sweat stays under your skin and it builds up and it like literally feels like someone's acupuncturing you all over the place when you start and like that combined with the bugs biting you you start just going like for a bit you know so when you get to camp and you pull all that crap off and you're in the breeze and you dry out you're like yes you know this is great this is great again i remember what it feels like to have a dry ass crack it feels good anyway uh still a million things to do obviously we, jim's got the tent set up we got some water up here it's obviously like quite a mission to go down to the river to get water um, so we brought as much as we could up. Uh, we're gonna cook up one of those Thanksgiving dinners tonight that Jim's wife, Tori, 
made for us because they're really hardy and we're freaking starving and we've noticed that we're starting to get like like a little snarlier with each other here and there over nothing and it's because we're losing weight and we're not eating as much and so we're gonna eat one of those because they're you know a hearty meal and uh and then we're gonna ko you know might uh jump on the phone and call our wives or something here if it's not five in the morning there which it probably is but um whatever hell of a day hell of a river and uh you know there's plenty more to come still we're at what kilometer we're at like kilometer 147 say so we still got 147 kilometers non-stop action beauty and scenery um loving this river loving it kind of quickly but it's also boiling our water for hot chocolate and delicious dehydrated Thanksgiving dinner and I think it's safe to say that this spot turned out to be ridiculously cool and freaking beautiful it's epic dude yeah, it's epic. epic look epic. at this spot yeah. wow nice fire cool Thank you.